Good morning. I'm Deacon Ricky White, one of the Sunday school leaders here at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 2624 East 24th, East 25th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46218, where the pastor, the senior pastor is Reverend Fitzhugh Lee Lines Jr. Again, good morning to all of you. And I'm thanking, thanking you for allowing me to come into your house today. Today's lesson is coming from the winter quarter, uh, unit three, justice and adversity, and children unit is justice during the storm. <clears throat> the general topic is build that misunderstanding God's justice. The adult topic is enduring false charges and the youth topic is false charges. The background scripture comes from Job 8. The devotional reading comes from James 1, first chapter, 1 through 4. Print passage is from Job 8, chapter 1 through 10, and verse 20 through 22. The key verse is from Job 8, chapter first and second verse. And I'm gonna read the key verse to you now. I'm gonna read it first from the King James Version and then I will read next from the NIV, King James. Then answered Bildad the Shiite and said, how long will thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? The key verse from the NIV version states, then Bildad, the Shiite replied, how long will you say such things? Your words are a blistering wind. Those are the key verses, therefore. Um, so, now, I'm going to move I'm, going, I'm not going to read the Sunday school lesson, but I'm going to read in, when I get to each section, I'm going to read each section out to you. But I want to get to the introduction. And in this introduction, well, let me say first, before we get to the Sunday school lesson, there's a, uh, let's, let's say a prayer first. I'm sorry. I, and, I, and I got this prayer. I want to say this prayer specifically for this uh, lesson today. May we pray. Father, today. May your spirit remind us to seek quiet so that you may listen first to your voice and then understand the heart of others. Teach me when to speak and when to be quiet. Father, please help me to trust you even when I don't understand why things happen as they do. Comfort my heart and remind me of your goodness and love. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. All right, what, what I wanted to, I kind of did that prayer for this particular lesson for us to uh, listen and be quiet sometimes when we um, advising people. Um, this lesson we're gonna have Introduction, I'm going to go in God is Justice in the biblical background. And there are four exposition application of the scripture and subtitles that we're going to go through. And this Job is falsely accused by Bildad. Bildad offers Job counsel. Bildad offers to a former, Bildad appeals to a former generation and Bildad announces God vindication. So the <clears throat> introduction. God is just. Every day, every day. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, I was trying to write something out. Every day, tragedy strikes, strikes some families around the world. Hunger, pestilence, terrorist act, poverty, all leads to heartbreak and despair. Throughout 2020 and into 2021, families and communities were ravaged by the global pandemic. The novel coronavirus, COVID-19, has wrecked havoc on families of Black and Latino communities. 
some of whom suffered multiple deaths. And I, and I can tell you that's true because my family suffered multiple deaths. Hundreds of thousands of people have died in America, often alone and isolated from their family members because of the disease they was in hospital and their family members could not come and visit them. Uh, eat early on in the pandemic, some people concluded and espoused that this must be the work of God, whose purpose was to inflict his wrath upon a disobedient world. You know, the subject today is on this introduction is God is just. And, and I, I once was a believer until I actually started to study in Job here that maybe God was punishing everybody for this act, but God is a just God. And no, he wasn't doing this just for a punishment. So would a just God do this to the people of the world? Many believers struggle with the question of God's justice. Does God cause the evil that we experience to come upon us? The book of Job raised the question regardless of regarding the justice of God. His friends, Job friends, were all under the impression that Job's problem was the result of Job's own evil and sinful action. Oh yeah, they they because basically his friends were saying, "Hey, no, if uh, you wasn't sinful, this never would have happened to you." Does God permit evil? Does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Does God permit evil people to prosper and good people to suffer and live in poverty? These are very important questions and they deserve an answer. Is God just? And if God is just, what does that mean for those who live in a world shrouded and mired in the constant struggles for justice? One of the foundation cornerstone of the law of Moses was to call for Israel to practice about absolute justice without partiality. See Levit Leviticus 19, 15. One of the primary address in the books of Job is the question of theodicy. Theodicy relates to the question of whether or not God is just and righteous. It attempts to show that God is not responsible for evil and the pain that humans suffer, even though God allows suffering to exist. You know, when I first saw this word theodicy, probably about uh, 10 years ago when I was teaching tithing, tell you the truth, and uh, I saw that word in there because it was in, is God just? You know, why some people are rich, why some people are poor, why some people need help? And uh the, the, the subject came out, so is God just? Why he allow some people to be rich and some people to be poor, or some people homeless and some people not. But in a way, God is a just God. And we learned that there are times when life being dis bring disaster out of the way. It is a natural occurrence. Then there is the pain that results from what we do to one another. Uh, this this is right here, this particular one. Then there is the pain that results from what we do to one another. Uh, I remember Reverend Leo Scott saying, it's nothing hurt like church for church folks hurt. When you get hurt in the church. You know, we can do some redundant thing to ourselves and each other because we uh, are hateful to one another. Or we are not uh, understanding why a person is going to a, a problem. And we can say some of the dundest thing there. So church for hope hurts is really a hurtful one. Um, Job comes right out of the question of why do righteous suffer? The Bible affirms that God is just his very character reveal his righteousness. And if you believe, you see, you have to understand that God will take care of you. If you're a believer, you understand that you have to have faith in God. And he will take care of you. He will bring you through whatever you are going through. Did he say that you may not have, you may have some tough days? Yes, you may have some tough days. But we as believers must believe that God is a just God, a righteous God, a good God, a God above all approach. And yes, he will take care of us. So the biblical background comes from, let me see here, the book of Job. The book of Job is structured around several dialogues between God and Satan, 
Job and his wife, his friends, I'm sorry, Job and his friends, Job and his wife, and God, Job and God. Let me say it again, because I may have stumbled through that. So there are four the, uh, dialogues going on here. It's between God and Satan. That's when God uh, um, gave Satan freedom to uh, put Job through trials and tribulation, trials and trouble. God and Satan is the first one. Job and his three friends. Job and his wife. And Job and God, those are the first dialogue, the first four dialogues there. We can think of the book of Job as a, a book of history. The story of Job depicts the life of a man who goes through a series of traumatic experience. He is falsely accused of being unrighteous by his friends. He develops some doubts himself about himself and about the relationship with God but he was ultimately vindicated by God. Job is a wisdom book, a book of wisdom. It teaches us not to give advice, it teaches us how not to give advice. And I'm gonna talk specifically about one of his friends, Bildad. Job's friends come to comfort him in his misfortune and end up accusing him of committing some grievous sin which they claim was the reason for God's punishment. And we're gonna get into that. In Job, we are introduced to words that are not found in other books in the Bible. And then listen to me now. Satan interacts with God and challenges the Lord to put Job in his hand. Satan tells God that when challenged with trials and trouble, Job would turn away from the Lord. You see, <clears throat> Um, there's one thing I want you to understand now, because you may be going through some trials and troubles and you may think God is not with you, but God is with you. Uh, Job, no one else knew the problems Job had. Uh, his family didn't know. Only God knew what Job, the reason why he was going through these problems. So when you get ready to accuse someone, you have to make sure you understand the story. And you probably never understand it so because God is not going to tell you why he's doing something. He's just going to carry it out because God does not need your help to do anything. What you got to do is continue to be faithful to God and hold on to his unchanging hand. And therefore, yeah, he will vindicate you. He will restore you to your biggest and bigger heights than you did before. There are three dialogues that we're going to talk about here. In the first dialogues, the book say, there's a logical flow to the speeches of Job and his friend. Each one of his friends spoke and offered his interpretation and explanation of Job's denials. Yes, and then it was followed by Job's denial on that as well. So three things that, that we're going to talk about. This, these three dialogues opens up under the, uh, the, uh, the Bible story. The, the, the Sunday school story, sorry, reference Job and Bildad. Now, we're going to start the Sunday school lesson. Now. The exposition the application of the scripture. Job is falsely accused by Bildad. This is verses 8th chapter, 1 through 4. And I'm going to read them to you. Then I'm going to read them to you slowly. And they follow. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. 8th chapter, 1 through 4. Then Bildad, the Shiite, replied, how long will you say such things? Your words are a blistering wind. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. Wow. Now, not only did he tell him you was wrong, but now he's telling him, hey, your family must have been sinners too. So this is where we stand now. Let me, before I start, let me tell you that Job's three friends, Elpha, 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 the Terminite, Bildad, the Shiite, and Zophar, the Namanite. So those are his three friends, supposedly his three friends. Job is falsely cued by Bildad. Bildad, one of the three friends of Job, who went to comfort him, 
This is where we start chapter eight. You understand chapter eight, it goes back to Elizabeth, the first friend. He accused Job of doing something wrong. He was a sinner or something that he's paying the price for something he has sinned for. And Job replied to him, reference his denial and this friend was wrong. This is where Bildad picks up the Sunday school lesson today. Bildad goes to Job's reply to this speech of emphasize. He said, Bildad asked two questions. How, Job, would you continue to speak in this way? Bildad gave the impression that Job's long explanation was pointless. How could you think you was innocent? His second question to him said, how long will you sound like a blistering wind? We just got through talking in the verse there. Bill Dad said Job's explanation was potentially destructive. You know, you can you can take out the, the word destructive and, and although the Bible didn't say this, but Bill Dad might have been thinking Job was telling a lie or something. In Bill Dad's eyes, God could not possibly be guilty of punishing Job without a reason. Bildag demonstrated a complete absence of any empathy, of any feelings for the situation that Job faced. He, he, so that's why I'm saying he didn't believe Job. He, he thinking Job had done something evil. And, and when I get to the next verse, you're he, he gonna think, well, Job ain't as righteous as I, everyone think he is. Because God will not punish you if you haven't done anything wrong. That's that's the thinking here. You know, in some page uh, early in the commentary, they talked about karma, karma. If you do good, good things happen. To you. you do bad, bad things happen. That was the Hindu's belief, you know, early American Indians belief, you know, belief, karma. Well, Joe built that thinking, you know, God would not possibly put you through this mess if you haven't done it. But see, what they don't know is the freedom God has given Satan to do to Job. So when you go out there accusing someone, are you going to be judgmental? Make sure you remember the story. You understand the story. And if God is involved, you probably would never understand the story. Because his ways are not our ways. Our ways are not his ways. And he don't need our help to do anything. He's going to do it on his own, at his own time, and his own just way. So God uh, will do what is just for us and what is right for us. So basically what we have to do is continue to be faithful to him. All right. Verse three. Let's talk about verse three. And I'm going to read verse three to you here again. Does the God, does God pervert justice? Does the almighty pervert what is right? So verse three, by Bill Dad is saying, hey, he continued to assault Job with questions filled with insensitive accusation, accusation, accusations about his circumstances. Two additional questions he's come up with. Does God pervert justice? Means to bend justice, you know, tell a lie, or go around. God is not like that. Uh, prevent or make crooked or change around, you know how we got crooked politicians today and stuff like that. But the second one, does the almighty pervert what is justice? It is completely outside of the nature of God's nature to do evil. God is not gonna do evil. God is not going to allow unjust ways to uh, go, uh, go without punishment. And God is a just God. That's something we, again, we got to rely on our faith. And that's what Job did. Although it was tough for him, but Job remained faithful to God. He, he you know, he, there was one time that you read all of Job, you know, he said, just take me away. Let me die from this. But he never cursed God. He never cursed, never turned his back on God. So he believed in God and he trust God. Job was an impeccable man. And, and, and the reason why he was impeccable I'm going to tell you in a few minutes because I want to go back to the first chapter of Job in the eighth verse. I think that's where it comes from. But God, uh, nature is to not to be evil, is to be just. James, first chapter, 13 verse, 
when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So he can't be tempted, and nor will he tempt anyone to do evil. So stop that saying, well, God saw he was doing bad and took him out or had a bad accident. No, God, that's not God's way. That's not God's way. Something bad happened to someone. I can remember Pastor Lyons singing, our late pastor saying, giving us an example, and I'm not sure if it was a truthful example or what, but he said, ladies, uh, whether or not a lady's husband was uh, beating her and the mother was saying, God, why don't you stop him from beating her, his daughter, something like that. And something bad happened to the man. And she said, the mother said, well, God uh, came and corrected that situation. No, God is not evil. He does not do evil. He does not do evil. Yes, he allow evil sometimes to occur, but to say he gonna do evil and he's gonna commit harm to someone, no. That's not his character. That's not the way he, this belief. This belief is to treat everybody right, be just and righteous to all. Okay. I hope I got that to you. So the verse four there. Now I'm going to go to verse three, uh, or verse four, I'm sorry. Because I, I, I like verse four. I, I, I like verse four because I want to talk to you briefly about it. I like this verse. Now, verse four, when your children sin against him, this is Job. I'm sorry, this is Bill Dad talking to Job. When your children sin against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. Job, Bill Dad's a tough character now. Not only he's accusing Job of being a sinner, now he went so far as to tell Job that his kids were sinners and they had been something sinful enough that God would take them away from him. The kids died in a tragic accident. Uh, all his kids was in the house together when the wind came and blew the house down, killing all of them. A tragic accident. So Bill Dad is saying, hey, uh, your kid must have done something wrong to deserve that sin, to deserve that tragic accident, they have the sin. So Bill Dad accused Job's children of having been the worst sort of sinners, which is why they all died and so tragically, as I just told you, all of them was in the house together when the wind collapsed the house and killed them all. Here, we see what is often a distorted explanation used to explain the reason why God's people sometimes meet with tragic consequences. You know, Bill does not accept the fact that was a tragic consequence. He's saying because they had sinned, this was their punishment death and it was come uh, by um the tragic accident was being caused the house fell on the wind blew i guess you could say like a tornado today come by and blows a house wing and everybody says a tragic accident but bill dad said no this is not a tragic accident they had sin and that's why uh that happened but let me go back and remind you in fact i'm gonna tell you now so because I, I want you to understand this uh, I want you to understand that's the true reason. No, that's not it. Someone could surmise that God was the cause of Job's suffering. That was not so. God was not the cause of his pain, grief, and suffering. Satan was the cause and is instigator of Job's suffering. So God didn't cause Job's suffering. Satan caused it. The true reason for Job's suffering is the freedom. Listen to me now given Satan to inflict pain. And you go back to Job, the first chapter, in the second chapter, you can read that. A reason never revealed to Job or anyone else in this book. So what, uh, the devil came up to God and said, well, you know, your, your chosen one, Job, you know, he's upright, outstanding. This, uh, and what did, Job, what did God say about Job? And then what the devil say? Let me see, can I go back to that first chapter here and find it? Um, then, then the Lord said to say, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shines evil. So, <clears throat> God already knew about Job. 
and he's offering up. He just made up totally the devil. He allowed the devil to do whatever he wants to in terms of trials and tribulation and trouble. But he told him, do not take his life. So the devil did all he can to make Job curse God, to make Job uh, have doubt and faith in God. Uh, Job questioned his relationship one time with God, you know. Um, he wondered whether or not he was true enough for him. He was wondering what happened, why this was happening to him, just like you and I today. But one thing Job did, he remained faithful to the end. And he was vindicated by God and he was restored. And so was Job blameless? Yes, he, he was blameless. He was a good man. And God, that's why God offered him up to save him, because he knew Job was a good man. Not like his friends who's accusing him of everything now. So Job, um, bad things happen to good people. You know, in bad in bad days, Bill Dad's eye, God could not possibly be guilty of punishing Job without a reason. That's that's what he said now. Uh, he demonstrated a complete absence of empathy of any feeling for Job in the situation that Job faced. That's that's what happened in the second and third verse. So Bill Dad showed no empathy. He believed that these things are happening to Job because Job <laughs> was a sinner. In uh, the next chapter here, in a couple of verses, I'm going to talk to you about that. Uh, I'm going to kind of reinforce that. On um, Bildad, the next subtopic is Bildad offered Job counsel. Bildad offered Job counsel. Now, that sounds good, but I'm going to talk to you briefly about it. Uh, verses five through seven. Let's, let's read it and see what it says. Five through seven. I'm going to get the book over here so I won't be waning. So, but. but if you will seek God earnestly, this is Bill Dag talking, but if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginning will seem humble, so prosperous, prosperous will your future be. So, so Joe, build that still kind of have a doubt. He said, yeah, you, you need to pray to God and you need to ask him for forgiveness. Um, we as all Christians, um, build that's telling Joe to pray to God and seek the favor of the almighty. Clearly, all believers are to always pray and seek God in times of trouble. And I also say times of good, when it's good. I always pray to God, communicate with him. See, Bildad's statement presumed that Job was not a righteous man. See, Bildad is telling me now that he's saying, hey, if, if you say a prayer, if you pray to God and confess your sin, he'll take care of you. And, and that's correct, you know. But see, Bildad doesn't understand the situation. Bildad does not believe Job is a righteous man. See, Bildad thinks Job is a sinner. That's why all these things are happening to him. Bildad, um, let me see, Bildad's statement presumed that Job was not a righteous man. Bildad implied that Job was not all that people thought him to be. Hold up now. What did I just tell you? You ain't in what you thought, man. You, you walking around um, blameless and doing this and that, but you ain't all that. That's, that's basically what he's saying. That's what Bildad is saying. His friend. He tell him and take. His impeachable character. You, you're supposed to have impeachable character, but look what's happened to him. You're supposed to be blameless. You're supposed to be upright and God fearing, and he avoided evil. That's what God told the devil and everybody else in first chapter, the eighth verse of Job. He's a blameless man, an upright man, a just man. God had already told him that. But see, build that. He, he, you know, he just know you can't be all that. You can't be all that, because if you were, all these things would not be happening to you. If you would have lived a pure and upright, just life, these things would not have happened. Prayer. God surely hears his prayers and will restore all that he has plus more. So, so I mean, Bill, that he, he's, he's not believing that 
these things are happening to uh, Job uh, because Job is a sinner and God is punishing him. He's not saying he don't. He's not saying he's going to pray, uh, and he these things are just a natural occurrence, and God going to restore. He tells you, yeah, you pray now. So God can confess you can confess your sin and God can restore you. See, that's what Bill did. He he supposedly Job is a sinner, and that's basically what he's saying. He doesn't believe Job is uh, uh, telling the truth, especially with the speech that he gave to Ephesus. You know, he Bill Dad just doesn't believe Job at all. So we had to go through that and understand. Uh, like I say. We, don't be accusing people. Don't be uh, accusatory. Don't be judgmental because you don't know what God has in store for that individual. You may have something in store that you may not recognize, may not know, may not believe, but God is still in control. Only thing we have to do is remain faithful to his word. Remain faithful to him. He's faithful to us. He's a just and righteous God. We just got to remain faithful to him. Be like Job. Things got tough and hard, but he still kept his faith in God. Okay. We're going to move on to the next subtitle now. And it said, Bill Dad appeals to a former generation. And a former generation, you know, that's, uh, I kind of like that. Let, let me read. I'm going to read verse 8 through 10. And so I'm going to go through it right quickly. Ask the former generation and find out what their ancestors learned. For we were born only yesterday and knowing nothing in our days on earth are but a shadow. Will thy not instruct you and tell you? Will thy not bring forth words for thy understanding? Now, Bill, that had a point here, you know. <clears throat> He's saying, go back to the ancestors. Go back to those elders who had lived a long life, who had experienced Christian things, who understood the way of the world and how things work, who probably has seen or experienced those things. See, in verse 8 through 10, see, Bill, that kind of changed in his tone a little bit. He appealed to Job with very stern in strong language to inquire, which means to seek information from someone. See, in this scripture, the past is never a bygone era to be forgotten. Rather, the past is always a reminder of what the future can be if the lesson of the past are discarded. Okay. Verse 9, build that remarks about the brevity of life and no one lived long enough to accumulate all the knowledge needed in life. He's telling Job, you haven't lived long enough, and you may not live long enough, but there is someone, some of our ancestors and so forth, who have lived a long life and has experienced certain things. So go seek their advice. That's basically what he's saying. If Job were to appeal to the ancestors, then they would be able to teach him all that would be required to face the circumstances through which he was living. They would tell him in other words, other, the words that come straight from their hearts, words of truth. Basically, you know, something like kind of remind me with my kids, my especially my two boys, you know. Uh, they asked me a question. You know, the, the Deborah and I are not going to tell them a lie, and we're not going to tell them something and make them feel good. We're going to tell them the truth and the facts about those things or the situation that's going on. See, but they go in the streets and someone else tells them something is easy for them to accomplish that and they may want to do that. But this is what Job is, I build that as telling a Job. Go seek your ancestors. Go seek those who came before you. See what they experienced about these things. See what they done and follow that, those words. There. So he said, follow the truth and ancestry. That's true, that's true. But Bill Dad didn't understand the situation. But Job still remained faithful. Amen. Amen. Now, the last subtopic we're going to talk about is that Bill Dad announces God's vindication. Okay, Bill Dad announces God's vindication. And, and this is, I like this. This is, uh, <laughs> you know, 
build that still in one of these verses just didn't get verses 20 and 22. Okay, verse 20 and 22. Surely, and again, I'm writing for I am reading from the NIV version. Surely God does not reject one who is blameless or strengthen the hands of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame, and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Amen. Okay, all right. See, in verse 20 and 22, Bill that ends his speech with a further assault <laughs> upon the character of Joe. You know, Bill, Bill Dad, just a tough friend. You know, he, you know, and you can see where he may have known something a little bit about God, but his application of the word is maybe a little weak there because he's still going to assault Job. He assumed that Job must be guilty of some sin or something that has brought this calamity upon him. Bildad told Job that God does not desert the righteous man, nor does he nor does he help those who are evildoers. So this, this is something we can take um, from, from this sentence, but build that just to understand this. God is not going to desert you, and he's not going to do uh, have those evildoers. Now, if you remember Israel, when I forgot um, one of the worst kings that uh, Israel had, uh, Judah had, and Judah went to, the king went to the prophet Jeremiah, and Jeremiah told us, no, ask him will God intercede in his behalf, and Jeremiah told us, no, God is not going to intercede in your behalf, he's, this is what he told me to tell you, that he's not going to intercede on your behalf, and he may assist your enemies. Now, <clears throat> you may say, well, Bill Dad was saying to sent pretty much, uh, He'd been deserted, but now God didn't desert Israel. Uh, Israel had a price to pay, and God never deserted them. He restored them back to their righteous kingdom. Same here with Job. See, Bildad is thinking that God uh, uh, would not desert anyone, but he's telling um, Job that hey, he deserted you because you sinned. That's what he's telling. He said, you're not as righteous as you thought. God has deserted you. You're not as righteous as you think. Yet, Bildad did, not, Bildad did not possess the knowledge of the fact that God had already declared Job to be righteous and above reproach. And that, that goes back to Job, the first chapter, the eighth verse, when I told you when God said, offer Bildad, I'm sorry, offer Job up to the devil. He said he's blameless, upright, righteous, shun evilness. So, Bildad did not understand. God had already declared Job as righteous, upright. There's no one else need to declare him upright and righteous. Uh, El, 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 Eliphaz, Eliphaz, the first uh, friend, uh, Bildad, and Zophar, all three of them, they didn't understand. God had already declared Job as righteous, and their comments meant absolutely nothing. Bildad demonstrated that he had failed to hear the concern expressed by Job regarding the loss of his family, wealth, and dignity. Further, he had revealed his lack of understanding about the nature of God. See, he, Bildad just missed the point all the way around. See, he, he was still stuck on this thing, I guess, in the Hindus, I'm not sure if they, he was still stuck, if, stuck that if you do something wrong, God will punish you. If, if you do what's right, God will reward you. So sometimes things are not as clear as it may seem. Um, Ecclesiastes tells you that uh, good things will happen to good people, and bad things will happen to good people as well. You know, it's the natural disaster that comes around. It, um, we we go into, you know, we prepare to go to war. 
somebody going to get killed in a war. Does that mean they deserve to be, be killed? No, it's just a fact. That was just a natural disaster. You know, we go to war, uh, you can be a good soldier, be a believer, and you still can get killed. Just like walking the streets, driving your car. Get, see, Bill Dad didn't understand that. He almost said, hey, you got to be doing something wrong. He, he refused to understand the fact that God is still in control. Does evil things happen? Yes. Does God condone evil? He does not. He doesn't want anybody to have a horrible accident or something, but things happen. Yes, he does allow it, but he's not going to go out there and do evil things. He's a just and righteous God. And build that just didn't understand that. Uh, he further revealed that he didn't understand the nature of God. In verse 21, Bildad stated that if Job were to turn from what he had done to incur the wrath of God, then surely God will restore his life and fill his mouth with laughter. I just got through talking about it. See, Bildad said, yeah, you, know, you pray and God will restore you. But see, what he didn't understand that though, uh, Job is not getting in the wrath of God. God didn't do anything to Job. It's the devil who's the one who's punishing and carrying out these terrible acts on Job. But God going to vindicate him because he was a faithful man, a dedicated man to him. He was a blameless man. He shunned evil. He was upright and respected man. And so therefore, God is going to vindicate him. See, Job is still thinking, I'm not Job, but Bill Dad is still thinking, he had done something wrong. So that's why you got to pray. You always have to pray. Don't, don't, don't let me tell you, you don't, but you always going to have to pray and build that. Have missed that point. See, he, he's on the point that Job, he, he just can't get off that point that uh, Job is a righteous man. He, he's still saying, no, you ain't righteous because all these things are happening to you. But what he should understand is that this is God's will. Uh, God didn't do anything to Job. It was Satan because God allowed, God gave Satan the freedom to put Job through some trials and troubles. And Bill Dad doesn't understand. No one else understands that, to tell you the truth. The friends, uh, God, uh, and Bill Dad, I mean, Job's wife, they, no one understood that because his friend, his wife, said, curse God and die. So um, they didn't understand that. See, this is still God's will. He still have faith in you. You have faith in him. And he's a just God. And he'll deliver you from all these things. God gracious acts of restoration. He's going to restore Job. Um, I didn't get a chance to read the next lesson. But um, it's still in Job. And I can't wait to read it. But um, you know, he blessed Job with a lot more than what he had. He was already a wealthy man. So he made him wealthier. Richer, you know. So... In verse 22, Bill Dad draw upon traditional Hebrew wisdom, thinking that those who have derived Job as a sinner will be brought to shame. And that's true. That includes his friend. Those who pointed out to uh, Job that, hey, you're a sinner. God is going to demonstrate to them, hey, you no, know, this is a righteous man. And he, those sinners will be brought to shame. Those, those people. Um, who was against Job, who told him, hey, you need to curse God and move on. And his three friends, uh, uh, Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, and Zophar, you know, all three of them said, no, you, you done done something. So God is going to open their eyes as well. God's going to say, hey, that's my man. And you refuse to believe him. You refuse to act like he would, to be faithful until the end, to be faithful. He, Job was faithful to God. So in the in, in, hold up, in the end, Job was vindicated by God. But those who had falsely accused him of sin, uh, they very ones who were humble before the hand of God. I just got through saying that. So um, they're going to humble themselves because they're going to see Job is a very uh, a blessed man. He, he's not vindictive. He, he was a man of character. And God knew that, but they didn't know that. And unfortunately, they didn't know that. And they're supposed to have been friends. So um, that's, that's kind of sad that we end that way. But God going to vindicate Job because of his faithfulness. And, and I want to reach you uh, one thing here. See, 
In the Bible, Job is the example of a man who faced untold personal tragedy and continued to hold to his faith in God. He faced great tragedy, but he continued to hold his faith in God. Amen. Amen. And in conclusion, how do you handle suffering? What do you do when your world caves in and there is no logical explanation? What happened when your family is attacked and all that you have is taken away from you for no good reason? What explanation can we give when bad things happen to good people? There are times in life when all people will be forced to travel through the shadows of suffering and even death. In the account of Job's life, Satan was permitted to touch everything Job owned, except his life. Without warning or compassion, Satan took physical possession of everything. Job owned, expected his Job owned, except his life. His friends and even his wife scolded him, suggesting that he curse God and die, or that he was guilty of some great sin. There we go. Judgmental. We have learned in life that not all suffering and tragedy are the result of some great sin we have committed. Sometimes it is just the nature of life. And in that content, God reigns supreme. Thank you. I want to say a quick prayer. It's Lord God of creation. Teach us to live in such a way that we are never overwhelmed by the trials of life. May we always look to you as a source, as our source of strength and encouragement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, for those of you, I hope you have your pencil and paper. I'm going to give you next Sunday's lesson. I'm going to give you the next Sunday lesson. is uh, The general topic is serving a just God. And this is going to come from Job. The print passage is going to come from Job. Are you ready? I hope you have your pencil and paper right out of um, Tag your Bible. Print passage is going to come from Job, 42nd chapter, 1 through 6 verse, and 10 through 17 verse. That's next Sunday, February 27th. The day is February 22nd. Okay, the print passage again, Job, 42nd chapter, 1 through 6 verse, and 10 through 17. That's the print passage, so you have the opportunity to, to go over and prepare and read uh, the Sunday school lesson, prepare for the next week's Sunday school lesson. And I think uh, Reverend Leo Scott would be the Sunday school teacher. And so you prepare yourself because Reverend Leo Scott always brings a good lesson. Now, I would like to say thank you for allowing me to come into your homes today. I hope I edified you. I hope you receive the message in the word today. The day at 1130, so tune in to see our senior pastor, Reverend Fitzy Lee Lyons Sr at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 26th, 24th, East 25th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. He has a word just for you. So tune in and God bless. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.